Power Level 10K is a very popular ZSH prompt theme and I just made a video about it. And in this one, I'm gonna show you a custom segment that I built here live on stream that shows the SBT version and it does a little bit more behind the scenes. Let's get right to it. Hey, Vlad here from devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. If you're new here, you should probably know that this is mostly a Scala channel. However, very often I cover all kinds of software tools, especially gorgeous CLIs. This video is half a demo and half a tutorial for building your own custom segments in P10K. There are several build tools in the Scala ecosystem. However, the most widely used one is called SBT. And I've written a segment that uh, shows you the SBT version of the project. It obviously only shows you if you're inside of an SBT project and also shows you whether your uh, version matches the one that is the latest on Maven Central. And also there's a little bit of caching in there because it's very hard to write anything these days without caching. So let's demo it real quick and then I'll show you the code. Uh, I should probably mention that I'm not an expert. I just wanted to write my own custom segment and so I did. By the way, it was here live on stream on YouTube, which reminds me, this video is sponsored by awesome people like yourself who support me on Patreon. The money goes straight into this channel. It allows me to pay for an editor who frees some of my time, which I then choose to spend again with you, whether it's by answering your questions on Discord or during the live streams here on YouTube. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. All right, so let's demo it real quick. So if I go to a directory like this one, as you can see, it shows uh, 162, but there's also this arrow down. So if I open another prompt and I go into another project like this one, it actually shows 171, which is at the moment of the recording is the latest one, okay? So there is no arrow down, okay? So uh, I'm using a nut as an SBT logo because it turns out that if you zoom in a little bit, you see that there is actually a, a nut. Uh, like a bolt nut uh, screw looking thing and so I chose it uh, there's no uh, ugly brown color like this so I chose blue because I'm using the Java prompt so I chose like exactly the same one because you know I don't want to have a uh, rainbow in there all right so uh, I'm also going to show you how how to change the color so uh, whenever you're going to use this one uh, you can you know change the color of any any segment you like you can also change the icon and I'll show you how to do this in just a second so obviously the version comes from uh, from this file um, and over here as well from that's not what I wanted to do properties there we go from this file as you can see uh, it actually took a little bit to load and I believe this was actually the cache that it expired I set it to 24 hours and I believe exactly now it expired okay I'll show you how, how all of this is done a bit later but as you can see like it's, it's totally fine right so it caches the you know the latest version uh, that it gets from uh, from me now I didn't create a PR yet because I'm actually thinking about it, create another one uh, you know another segment for the actual Scala version and then maybe I'll end up reusing some code and then I'll submit it as one thing I actually haven't really decided if I'm going to do this because uh, getting the Scala version is actually not so easy because SBT is not uh, is not shell friendly so I can't really wait for like 10 seconds for it to to load the build at least 10 seconds you know for a hello world project you know just to ask it for a um, you know for the Scala version and you know parsing you know manually parsing the dot SBT files or you know the project uh, slash dot Scala files for the version is a bit error prone because the version might be specified multiple times so again I, I haven't decided yet so if you wanted to use it now uh, you would need to go to my dot files uh, let's actually do this right now. So um, if you go to dot .files, this link is going to be down in the description, dot .files at uh, You know, if you press T and you go to P10K, uh, click over here, and if you search for my SBT uh, version, like this is where I'm using it, right? So I chose to like use it on the right. You can obviously use it uh, wherever you want. And the other occurrence is over here, right? So this is the function. Just grab this entire function. It starts over there, um, ends over here, right? So all of this stuff, uh, is part of it like until until here just like drop it into your p10k and you will be able to use it uh, before, we're gonna go through all of this code in just a second because you know um, one of the purposes for this video is to uh, to show you how to write your own segments uh, but before this I'm actually going to show you how you can uh, configure it and stuff so let me actually uh, open another tab so if you run uh, simply uh, p10k like this it shows you a couple of uh, commands and one of them is a segment so if you do p10k help segment like this then you will actually see a tiny tutorial um about how to you know how to write um your own segments so i'm just gonna like uh scroll through it real quick okay so start over here um you know basically um you're gonna have a function and in the end of the function you're gonna do p10k segment uh, a couple of flags that are all explained over here i'm not gonna go into it uh, you can pretty much read it on your own 
And the only one that I'm going to mention is uh, state, right? So you can pass in a, a state, right? So you, you come up, uh, you come up with your own states, right? So it's basically strings, and these strings can then later be used to override, uh, you know, the colors, for example, right? So for example, mine has two states, right? So either your version is up to date or it's not up to date, and you can use this state to override a color. So if you scroll down over here, there's an example of a function that you can just like copy paste and you, you can then use. And uh, one of the things that it does over here, uh, for example, is it, it creates this variable state. And then when it does PTNK segment, it actually passes it on, right? And then later you can be, you're going to be able to do, so you always do like power level 9K and then underscore and the name of the prompt. In my case, it's, you know, my SBT version. And then you can pass in the state and then you either pass the content expansion, which means you can replace the entire text or the visual identifier exp expansion, which means that you can replace the icon uh, or the background or the foreground. State, the state is obviously uh, optional. Okay, so let's demo this real quick. So um, let's go, for example, to my uh, P10K ZSH. I'm going to go like somewhere like at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to um, just paste some over here. I'm actually not sure if I can do over here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's, let's try this. Okay, so if I'm doing type set hyphen G and then I'm going to do power level 9k right so the, the name of the prompt is power level 10k but it's a fork of power level 9k so you actually have to uh, spell 9k okay so i'm going to do underscore and then my sbt version right so this is a convention sort of like you know if you're developing your own segment you call it mine then when you know when you fork the p10k and you submit it you remove the mine so that it doesn't collide okay so um if i'm just going to do it like this so uh if i just go foreground right so without the state and i'm going to do something like uh, 94 right 94 then the color is going to be like sort of brown ish okay so let's see if i go like this and i go like that and you're going to see that the color is like brown this is the closest one that i could get uh you know to this ugly brown like this is what happens when backend developers uh design stuff okay so um actually if you go into uh, if you go into P10KZSH and you scroll down like just uh, just over here, right? So if you grab this thing, right? In fact, in my dot files, I have an alias for exactly this thing, right? So if you paste this thing in, it will print out all the colors and you can use these numbers, right? So as you can see, like 94 is like over here. So this is the one that I that I just used, okay? And I actually created an alias, I call it list colors, right? Which does exactly this. You can grab it from my dot files. So I just do list colors and it shows me exactly this thing, okay? So let's try something else. So if we go down over here, so instead of a version uh, foreground, um, we'll go with uh, something like background, for example, right? Background, and we're gonna use like 105, for example. Okay, so we're gonna, gonna go like this, and uh, I'm gonna go like that, and there we go. So this is like this purplish, and the foreground is uh, you know blue. So let's actually go to here and uh, go foreground again. I actually really like this purplish, uh, purplish looking thing, as you can see this one. But I don't like this, you know, this kind of rainbow. So I kind of stayed with the uh, with the same one. Okay, let's try something else. So let's go over here find the foreground and we're going to do visual identifier okay and so now over here we're going to pass in a string and we can use for example the scala logo right so if we go to nerd fonts uh, over here i'm using the fewer code as i mentioned in the previous video so if you go to icons and you just search for you just search for scala for example and you can click over here on icon and it copied it into my buffer and i'm just going to paste it over here insert paste it over here as you can see this is the the scala logo okay so save the file go here go like this and now we're using the we're not using the scala logo why we're we not using did i mistype something oh it should be visual identifier expansion right expansion there we go okay so it's always expansion right so there we go we have the you know the purple purplish um scala logo okay and what you can also do is you can go over here right and you can say well not always but just for the not up to date right so we're going to use this visual identifier right so like this actually we should use it for the up to date right so if i remove this right then it's still gonna work right because like 171 is up to date but if i go to this one then as you can see it still uses the previous logo okay so this is pretty much like how you can uh configure stuff and in general you know if you 
uh, if you if you open this file and you search for something like, um, for example, Nix. So if you search for Nix, it's very common to to configure things like this. So for example, over here, uh, you know, you can change the foreground, you can change the content expansion if you don't like the pure and pure, right? So it's, so it always works like this, right? So you always have the the foreground, the background, the content expansion, and the visual identifier expansion, and you can also have states. And also, if you go to the top, uh, you'll see they have a bunch of examples where they do something like this, right? So you can actually uh, pass in uh, a bunch of different states, right? So you can have like left and right, you know, whatever. Okay. So uh, let's actually have a look at the code. Let me open it and I'm going to search for SBT version and we're going to go to this one. Okay, so uh, most of it is actually just bash, right? And this video is not supposed to be a bash tutorial. So I'm going to try to focus on the actual, you know, P10K things, okay? But I can't, you know, without actually going through the entire code. So uh, pretty much like at the end of this function, right? So the idea is like you throw this function in, right? Uh, you, you call it somehow, like in this case, it's like, so it has to be like prompt underscore, right? And then, you know, while you're developing, you call it my something, my SBT version. And so you leave out the prompt underscore, right? And then like at the top, you know, if you search again for my SBT version, so you don't use like prompt over here, right? And then obviously, you know, you put it wherever you want, right? So uh, in my case, like I put it on the right, uh, let's actually grab it and also put it on the right, you know, after the, after the new line over here. And let's also put, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put it everywhere just to, just to demo it, okay? So the left prompt, um, over here and also like even after the new line right so i'm just gonna like stick it everywhere uh stick it in everywhere um you know just for the sake of it okay so as you can see now it's everywhere right so first line on the right uh second line on the right um here you know left one and even here before the prompt and by the way this is a nice thing in power line 10k so if you start typing something and if you start typing like too much that it goes over here then this thing on the right is going to disappear right so once it reaches it it will disappear it's really really nice next one this one all right so um at the end of this file i'm pretty much doing this right so i'm doing like p10k segment and then i'm passing the state it's either not up to date or it's up to date. I'm passing the foreground of 32, which is this bluish. I'm passing the icon of this not, which happens to be Scala logo. And then T stands for text, right? So I'm either passing in the SBT version or this arrow down and then the SBT version. This is pretty much the only thing in this entire function uh, that is relating to, related to P10K. Everything else is just bash. Okay, and I'm just gonna walk through it just so that you understand it. Uh, it was basically a lot of copy pasting from Stack Overflow. I'm not a bash expert. Okay, so uh, over here, this part concerns itself with getting the SBT version. It doesn't have anything to do with the latest version, just like the, the SBT version. So basically it says, uh, okay, so if uh, this file over here, if it exists, well, then there are a lot of corner cases that I have to had to actually uh, deal with. So it turns out that in a builder properties file you can specify the sbt version multiple times and it turns out that sbt actually takes the last line okay so i'm getting them in reverse i'm doing some awk magic to to actually get it out and making sure that you know everything is trimmed and stuff and if i parse it incorrectly uh you're going to see the word bug displayed okay and otherwise if this file doesn't exist we return okay so this portion right over here it pretty much concerns itself with just getting the version everything else is caching and you know getting the latest version first we're starting with getting the caching directory which comes from uh you know either xcg or just you know home.cache and there's a folder called p10k hyphen my username which is vlad and inside of, inside there i'm creating a dev inside directory which is over here and inside of it i'm creating a file called latest sbt version so in fact i can actually demo this so if we were to bat into into here you see there's uh there's this so if i were to remove this file well actually let's let's go into uh zeo for example right so if i were to remove this file uh not this one i renamed it recently okay then it will take like maybe two seconds to you know to get the version and then you know to cache it again so as you can see one two there we go okay but now it's cached okay so the way it works is that i hard coded the timeout i'm still thinking about it whether i should allow you guys to change it uh or not you know once i contributed to the pr you know once i create the pr and i contributed to p10k you're obviously not going to have access to this code but you will still be able to you know to set these variables right um like all of these variables they work automatically but you can still create your own right so you will be able to maybe override the cache but i don't think you should like it's not urgent if sbt comes out you know that, that you find out like maximum 24 hours and one minute later you know one second later uh timeout in hours converted to seconds 
uh, a bunch of real crap to figure out, you know, whether, you know, whether cash, you know, timed out or not. This is a bunch of like bad stuff over here. Uh, you know, we're seeing if the cash file exists. And by the way, the whole thing is negated over here. We're seeing if the cash file exists, getting the current time, uh, getting the uh, modification timestamp of the file. And if we're seeing if it's smaller than, you know, our 24 hours in seconds, you know, and if this whole thing is greater than zero, then we know that uh, our cash is not valid. Okay, because the whole thing is negated, right, over here. It's a not. Over here, we're using a bunch of tricks to actually get, uh, you know, the latest version uh, from GitHub, right? So we're using this trick. So we, we cur we're doing a curl into the latest releases of SBT. We're using the hyphen L flag to follow the redirects. And then we're asking it to return only the effective URL. And then we're parsing this URL over here, you know, to, to get the actual, you know, to get the tag and then, you know, 1.71. Okay, so we're, this is actually the latest version that is on GitHub. But only because it's on GitHub doesn't mean that it's on Maven. Now, unfortunately, we cannot just go to Maven. Actually, I'm, I didn't plan to do this, but I'm actually going to show this too so if you go to like search.maven.org and you go to like sbt or something right and you find it you know works call sbt you know 1.71 you know if you go over here and you put something like you know 1.81 a normal website would return a 404 but this one doesn't it just it does like all of this stuff i happen to have found this one okay and so i'm using this one instead right so this is some i don't know uh, OSS index on a type or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, like this one actually returns a 404 if it doesn't exist. Okay. So basically I'm taking this version, I'm, I'm doing a, a request over there and then curling. And you know, if it returns a 404, then I know that it's not on Maven yet. Maybe it's on GitHub, uh, you know, but it's not on Maven yet. Okay. So over here, pretty much checking it out. Uh, so this one over here, the GitHub response is done in such a way that, you know, if you're in a train and you don't have a network, then, you know, the response is going to be a 404 and then i know okay well then you know just get whatever whatever is cached okay so does it exist you know did this one work you know hyphen and return you know checks for zero code and stuff and then it checks for you know for a 200 okay and uh if if you know if all of this is fine then it, it takes this latest uh latest sbt version that is on github and puts it into the cache file Okay, otherwise it just touches the cache file so that we update the modification timestamp. So at the end of the day, the latest SBT version is whatever is in this cache file. And that's pretty much it. So over here we have just an if, right? So if we have the latest SBT version, right? So if everything went well, uh, and if the versions differ, you know, SBT version doesn't match the latest SBT version, then we pretty much add this arrow. Otherwise we're gonna do this. And that's pretty much it, okay? I'm gonna let you guys know probably on, on Twitter or whatever, you know, if I open a PR, uh, it would actually be kind of cool if you would uh, give it a like because the latest uh, release of P10K was in February. I'm recording this, uh, what is right now? The middle of September. So it's been like many, many months uh, since then, like seven months. So I don't know when the next uh, release is going to be. Otherwise, if you really, really want to just grab it from my dot files, it's pretty much complete as it is. Uh, I've been dog footing it for a couple of days now. It seems fine. You know, but we'll see when the next uh, SBT version actually comes up. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe, if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to contribute to free tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.